Phil was kind of a funny guy. I think he had a good sense of humor based on some of the things that I've seen. There's this interesting document where Phil had sent uh, a letter to Frank Sinatra. And Frank, I think this is a great picture of this with Frank and, and JFK. I don't know if it was like the inaugural party or something like that, but yeah, Frank was actually, the host of that. I think Phil was the only photographer that was allowed at the inaugural dinner. Right. And he sent him like this letter that said, you know, like, hey, I would love to shoot this, you know, check the box if it's yes or, you know. Fuck off if it's fuck no. Off. Yeah. If it's no. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, Frank knew him that way. I mean, right. they had a relationship that way. And getting a picture of Frank Sinatra lighting someone else's cigarette is very unusual because Frank really didn't defer to other people that way. Yeah. Exception being Kennedy. And of course, Kennedy never really liked to be photographed with a cigarette. You know, that's right. another thing. So it's this image that is really capturing a single moment. It's a little jittery, a little blurry, but it yeah. captures the moment quite well. And uh, it's one of Phil's most popular pictures. Hey guys, it's Cam with Craft and Tailored. In this episode of The Details, we're talking about famous photographer, Phil Stern. For those of you that don't know, Phil is an American photographer who is responsible for capturing some of the most iconic images of all time. Phil's career started as a US Army Ranger and as a war photographer during World War II as a part of Darby's Rangers. And then after the war, Phil came here to Los Angeles and became one of the most iconic Hollywood photographers of all time. The story behind how we got involved with the Stern estate and how we met Phil's family and ultimately started working with David Fahey of the Fahey Klein Gallery, which is one of the most notable galleries for art photography in the entire world, actually started from an episode of The Details. So our first episode, our launch pilot episode of The Details was actually with Shot NYC. And there were two images of shot perfecto jackets being worn. One of Marlon Brando and the Wild Ones and one of James Dean. And then we're introduced by mutual connection to the Stern estate as a result of needing to license those photos for our initial production. And these are actually the photos that I first saw when I was growing up that made me wanna buy a leather jacket in the first place. So we sat down with David Fahey of the Fahey Klein Gallery here in Los Angeles and. David Fahey was a good and close friend of Phil Stern, who unfortunately died in 2014 at the age of 95 after having a, an amazing career. It's not only a pleasure of mine, but also a sincere honor to have not only met with the Stern family, to have an inside look at some of his work, but also to be asked by the family to represent his work and, and share it with you as a result of you know, us chasing watches this is a perfect example of our slogan, which is, it's more than just watches, which leads us to amazing and special projects like this. So let's check in with David Fahey and let's learn a little bit more about Phil's life and, and his career as a photographer. Why don't we start by talking about how you got started in fine art photography and maybe tell me a little bit about the Fahey Klein Gallery as well. Sure, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for inviting Thanks me. Thanks for having us. There's some say that fine art photography is uh, the art of the latter half of the 20th century and the beginning of the 21st century. I mean, film, video, and photography are ubiquitous in the culture today. You see it all, everywhere. It's everywhere. And when I first started, it was uh, not truly recognized as a fine art. It was quite rare. I initially started photographing music personalities in clubs, folk clubs, jazz clubs. Here in LA. Road, here in Los Angeles. Which is kind of interesting because yeah. those clubs aren't really around much anymore, but yeah. there was the Pacific Jazz Movement. You had Miles Davis. You had all these guys coming to LA in that era in time. Yeah, and it was, it was everybody. I could get in free and I could make pictures and I could be creative and it was exciting and I loved music. And uh, so that sort of probably opened the door for me. And then after my time in the, in the army, uh, I, was, I was drafted and then I, when I came back to the States, I went to graduate school and studied uh, fine art photography. So I have an undergraduate degree in communications and a master's degree in art with an emphasis on creative photography. And then I started working for the only photography gallery really 
LA. happening. Yeah, contemporary photography happening, and I, at that time, became the director of contemporary photography. And what many people don't know is. The way photography came into being for our world was that great photographers started out as teachers. And I was also a teacher and it was an organization called SPE and we would do conferences and at these conferences would be all of the important photographers. So I had a chance to meet, greet and get to know many of them. And so that was sort of an entree and opened the door and got me involved, got me started. I started working in the fine art photography business. Um, I think I remember back when we sold a Cartier Bresson picture for $300 or something, and it was a big thing. Uh, people today don't realize that, but not that long ago, this collecting photography was not a big business. And uh, also being recognized as an art form was, is fairly recent, and the medium has come a long way since, since then. Richard Avedon, who photographs portraits in fashion and always really promoted his portraits over his fashion work. It was his fashion work that's actually brought the most at auction. Herb Ritz, Portrait of Five Models. We sold, uh, it's an edition of 25, we sold probably 15 of them for $1,800. And that just sold in uh, auction in Europe for a quarter of a million dollars. Wow. And photojournalism um, or, or reportage is something that's yet to really be collected and bring high numbers. And uh, it just, it fluctuates, it's different. Somebody's, one artist is in and then it's quiet for a couple of years and then they come back. Phil has always had a consistent audience. The show we have on now with Phil Stern and Bob Willoughby has, has done extremely well. We've only been open, what, two and a half weeks, yeah. something like that. I came to the opening yeah. and, and there was some amazing attendance. And also I think the other thing that was great is the mix of people that was here was also really interesting. People don't realize that when they look at pictures like in this exhibition or in any exhibition for that matter, that they may be looking at the only print that was ever made. Because the perception is, well, I've seen that in a magazine, I've seen it on a documentary, I've seen it here, right. but a physical object, very rare. Being able to buy it, that single object with it signed, can be an unusual experience because your perception says, well, it's everywhere, but in actual fact, he only made three prints right. of that image. And of course, with the older people like Phil, they passed away before the market was really booming, so to speak. So they missed out, so we're only dealing with what exists and what's finite, what's here. The other thing that's interesting too is if we really look at how these photos were taken, Phil was using 35 millimeter film, but it's one frame in a 35 millimeter roll, and then that is ultimately enlarged. Yeah, when you see the physical thing and it's in your home and it's hanging, and I, I collect portraits, and one of the reasons I like portraits is that the subjects represent an aspect of the culture or my time that I really like. Yeah. It could be a writer, it could be a composer, a music personality, or whatever. And so you can really own a little piece of history. I've been doing this almost 45 years now. I've never really sold anything saying, this is a good investment. I just don't believe in that. Right. But over the course of time, I'm now seeing a lot of people that are downsizing and are selling things. And of course, the collection that I sold them cost this much, and now it's worth this much, yeah. you know. Many of them are surprised. Many seem to know how that occurred and acknowledge it. But there's still great things out there that are available. Uh, and, and it's unusual because um, you have to just take in mind um, there's maybe not as many out there as you, as you think. You know, Phil got his start obviously as a, as a war photographer in World War II, and then when he came back, he started shooting what we would consider probably some of the most iconic golden era of Hollywood photos. Do you think that we'll see iconic photos come out of the modern era, similar to what we've seen from, you know, Phil or maybe some of the other photographers of the era? Well, the idea is how do we differentiate between just a regular photograph and, and something that we characterize as fine art? It's a big question, it has many answers, but I would just say that um, with fine art photography, it sort of evolves over time and the importance and the significance of an image uh, changes over time. The culture has many artists, dancers, composers, photographers, filmmakers. There's a group that works regularly every day and they make wonderful uh, products. And then there's the, the handful of a few that kind of 
extend beyond that and go beyond the boundaries and sort of go into new territory. And then when you mix that willingness to push the envelope a little bit and also diversify, and you do it continually as your career evolves, you have someone like Phil Stern, who you realize over time, he's the one that really has captured that great photograph of Marlon Brando or Elizabeth Taylor or whoever it is, or of Betty Davis. Yeah. Uh, there's something about it that differentiates him from everybody else that photographed that subject. And so that's key about who are the people that really take you to a new place, take that subject matter to a new place, and kind of give us a picture of this personality. In Phil's case, give you a, a, a uh, a sense of that personality's true character. Yeah. And Phil was able to make that happen. If you were to you know, put something in front of somebody and say, hey, this is Phil Stern, right? What sure. would you put in front of them? When I'm talking to people about Phil or any of my artists, it's really difficult to say, this is the best. This is the one. This is the one. Because everybody's taste is different. Yeah, I mean, you have the picture of Marilyn Monroe and Jack Benny, for example. This pensive Jack Benny looking with his hand to his cheek, and she's kind of lost in a world that she shouldn't be where she is. Right. It was like a Hollywood benefit they were attending together. So you have this dramatic interplay between Monroe and Benny, which, you know, each one has dominates their area of the picture, but they really play off of each other well. Or um, he has a photograph of Anita Ekberg holding her hand up, blocking the I love light. that photo. Yeah, and yeah. it's kind of like blocking the glare of Hollywood and the way that Hollywood and the industry just gets into your soul and under your skin. It's a great image, I think, yeah. of, of his. But I, I can go on and on. I mean, I remember I, I introduced Phil to um, to Andy Warhol. The way that came about was uh, I got a call from Interview Magazine to, to get back to them with images that were photographs made in Las Vegas. Okay. okay. So I called different photographers that I knew and I called Phil and I said, Phil, do you have anything on Las Vegas? And he said, no, not really. And so I hung up and I called a bunch of other people and about a half hour later I get a call from Phil and he says, well, you know, I kind of lived with Frank Sinatra in the Rat Pack and photographed Vegas for about six months. Is that is that what you mean, that kind of stuff? And I said, yeah, that kind of stuff. <laughs> it's like no big deal. I was just hanging out with Frank. Yeah. We were just, you know. Hanging out with Frank. <laughs> and so he had that kind of camaraderie with these people. And, um, and I knew that Andy Warhol would get a kick out of meeting Phil because Andy, you know, really admired uh, Hollywood yeah. glamour photographs. And I never characterized Phil as Hollywood glamour, but it's, Holly, a slice of life in Hollywood right. that people seldom see. It's the yeah. real deal, and it's a real look at that person. And um, people recognize that right away, so I knew he would get along with Warhol. And so they did get together and had a great time. Andy bought a bunch of things. What, a, what an interesting meeting. Yeah. You know. So let's talk a little bit about how people can acquire fine art photography. Also, I think there, there are people, you know, much like myself that need guidance. You know, you and your gallery and the wonderful staff here does for the clients that you guys ultimately take care of. Well, we've embraced the, inter the internet 100%. So you can obtain a great deal of information about the gallery and who we represent, what we show. Uh, you can actually hear the artist speaking if you care to. Uh, we do interviews and whatnot by just going on our website. It's just www.fakelinegallery.com. Okay. That's a quick way. I've always felt I never want people to own things and buy things that they really don't want. So I right. give them as much information as possible. You can call me, talk on the phone. If you live elsewhere out of town or you can come in the gallery, happy to spend time with you. That's a big part of what we've been doing for the last 45 years is really educating people on not only the collectability of what it is, but the artists, what their work represents, how and why it has meaning. And then there's the care of the photographs, how you display them, right. and uh, how you inventory them and keep track of what you have. And so if anybody can walk in off the street and start a conversation with our staff, everyone is very uh, up to speed on all of the, uh, it was, the it questions was nice these people may have. Coming in and you and I kind of met in the back during the, the exhibition opening and it was funny because we just started, we, we talked about photography but we talked about all this other stuff as well and I think that that's the fun thing about um, you know, fine art photography as well as the other collectibles is that they're kind of all inter, intertwined and interweaved. So. Um, guys, I'll provide a link in the description below so that you guys can get in touch with the, with the Fahey Klein Gallery 
and um, be sure to follow them on Instagram. They're always posting these amazing, inspiring photos. We'll also provide a link in the description below uh, so that you can follow uh, the Fahey Klein Gallery. David, thank you so much for sure. having us here. We well, really appreciate it. No, it's my pleasure. I'm always happy to speak about photography, and most specifically, one of my favorite people, Phil Stern. Thank you so much for having yes. us. Pleasure. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I want to give a special thanks to Phil Stern's family for allowing us to showcase his incredible body of work and to David Fahey from the Fahey Klein Gallery. For more information, be sure to check out philsternarchives.com and also to purchase Phil's incredible work, be sure to head over to fahekleingallery.com. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. And then you said I could play a little guitar music and if you, you were, maybe to. you're going to send that around to some of the record people. We can definitely okay. do that. Or well, maybe we'll do it next time. <laughs>